prayer, uh, invoking the Holy Spirit to be with us. Once again, allow me to welcome our regular members as well as our new members that have joined. I can assure you that you are definitely in the right place. Please also be on the lookout. We do send announcements on our chats um, or on our screen. So please look out for those announcements. They actually help us to save time. Saints, this morning, we are blessed by one of our own, Dr. Paul Rasara, a father to the fatherless, I must be honest, a spiritual guide to those that actually need him. He's a man of faith, a man of prayer, a man that continues to speak of the loving grace and the mighty power of God. So I don't want to waste more time, but I want to give us more time to be able to hear the word. So at this time, I'm going to ask our doctor, our friend, our pastor, Pastor Paul Ratsara, to take the floor. The floor is yours, my son. Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful time that, uh, and privilege that you have given me. Uh, I think you, you can hear me. Uh, is it okay? Just want to be sure. All right. I just want to greet all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so happy that uh, um, I'm part of this program today. And uh, I heard many good things about this program. And when I was asked to take part this week, uh, even though I'm quite busy right now, I said, well, uh, I just need to make an effort to be, uh, to be a blessing and at the same time to be blessed by all of you. May the good Lord be with us and uh, let us continue to do what uh, we have been doing right now in prayer. Because we know, brothers and sisters, that we live in the end of time. Uh, we, we know all the signs, the signs of the times, uh, we know all around. But I just want to emphasize just one. One, many times we don't really talk about this, but the one in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, I read, But know this, that in the last days, perilous time will come. Perilous time, it is written there, there's a little note in some of the Bibles, and it is true when you go to the original, it is the time of stress. The time of stress uh, is a sign Stress is the sign. And this is what we are seeing right now because of this COVID, because of many things that is going to have happening. This is a time of stress. We live indeed in the end of time. So what shall we do? So this week, we are going to talk about a man, a man, Peter in the Bible. And we said, uh, from denial to powerful ministry and triumph. Where is the fire? Let us just bow our heads as we pray again. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we are going to spend together studying your word. We pray, Father, that you just take control of this meeting right now and fill us with the power from above. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. What shall we do? Where is the fire? That is the question. When you talk about the life of Peter, we can tell that there was a lot of ups and downs. But today we are going to talk about really one of the lowest point of this man of God. And we will find out the steps that he followed for him to get out of that lowest point and he has reached the highest. I mean, one of the highest point when it comes to serving God, when it comes to following God. I would like to invite you to open your Bibles and that is in Matthew chapter 26. In Matthew chapter 26, we're going to talk about the lowest point of 
of Peter. Matthew chapter 26, verse 69 to 70, 75, it talks about the denial of Peter. Let me just read this. We know already the story, so I don't need to uh, go too much into details. I just want to uh, read this. I read. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard and the servant girl came to him saying, you also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all saying, I don't know what you are saying. And in verse 71, and when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were with them, this fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. And then in verse 72, Verse 72, but again he denied with an oath, and I do not know the man. And a little girl, a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, surely you also are one of them, for your speech or your accent betrays you. Then he realized that he was really cornered and then he went to the lowest point. And then in verse 74, then he began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. So here is Peter. He was so much afraid and uh, even using a method for him to get out of the situation. That is in verse 74. That was a law. But we find out later that the same Peter, the same Peter became a powerful preacher. In Acts chapter 2, he preached just one sermon, 3,000 souls. He did not even have time to finish his sermon. And then people started to respond to the call. The same man was so much afraid, even afraid of the little girl. Look what he did, what he said. In uh, Acts chapter 5, in Acts chapter 5, he said something. He was so, he was so brave. He became so brave. And I would like to read in Acts chapter 5, verse 27 to 29. It is so amazing to see the power of God in his life. So he was threatened, not just by a little girl, but the Sanhedrin, the highest authority on, on, the, on the land. And uh, this is what his answer. Let's read Acts, Acts chapter 5 and verse, 60, verse, verse 27 to 29. Let me read this. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. Remember, this is then the council. You face the council. Verse 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest, notice that the high priest asked them, saying, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name. And look, you have filled Jerusalem with, with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. And Peter, instead of being intimidated, was terrified. This is what his answer was. But Peter and other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So he is Peter. He was so afraid, even just a little girl, just a little uh, number of people. But now, before the entire, before the entire council and the high priest, he said, "We would rather be God than man." And little later in chapter twelve, he was even put to put in prison for his faith. So the question is, what happened to Peter? Why is it that he was so low? He fell so low 
And what happened to him for him to become this mighty man of God, used by God in a mighty way. This is what we're going to study during this week, to find the path, to find the way for us to be strong, to have this triumph, to have the victory while you pass through this life, the challenges of life. What do we need to do to be strong, to remain faithful until the end? Despite the storm, despite the challenges of life, we stand firm. And definitely, we need to learn from the mystics of, of Peter so that we will not be like him, going down and down. And if it happens that it happened to us, what do we need to do to get out of that situation? For today, we are just going to uh, study one, one or two, because of the time constraint, one or two of the reasons of the fall of Peter. What happened to him? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, just before that denial, something happened. There was a conversation between Jesus and the disciples. And then in um, verse 31, 31 to 35, Jesus predicted and actually disclosed to them. He said, look, there will be a crisis and I will be arrested and all of you will run away. But Peter, he said this in verse 35, Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And in verse 33, he was quite arrogant when he said, Peter answered and said to him, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. So this is one of the reasons of his fall. What is the problem here? The problem of Peter, he was overconfident. He was overconfident. And he was quite arrogant. He said, you know, even all these, these disciples here, they may stumble, but me, I will never. And I'm even willing to die for you. So he was overconfident. That is one of his big, big, big problems. Because he didn't do that. And it is said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse, verse 12, he said, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. So he was overconfident. Instead of trusting God, instead of humbling himself to say then, Lord, just help me, help me to be strong. He was saying, look, I will never fall. Even all these apostles, all of them, 11 of them, they, I know them. They are quite of the coward people. Uh, they don't have courage, but me, Jesus, I am so powerful. I'm so confident. I will never, never deny you. So that is his first problem. And the second one we can find in chapter 26 as well. Chapter 26 and verse 14. Here, let's just travel now in time not only in space, and let's go to Gethsemane in this garden. And Jesus Christ, right there, just before facing the cross, because of you and because of me, he went there. He was struggling because he has to, to face the cross. And they went there to pray, and it didn't go alone. He went with the disciples. But in verse 40, then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter. So he said to Peter, he said, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? So that was his problem. He did not watch. He did not pray enough. He was just 
His self-confidence was just human. He did not pray enough. He did not watch. He did not pray enough. That was his problem. So today, we just limit ourselves on those two. First, Peter fell because he relied on himself. He did not rely on God. Secondly, he did not watch. He did not pray. My dear friends, while you face challenges in life, and we, we live indeed in this difficult time, we are tempted to rely on ourselves. We are tempted to think that we can do it ourselves. But listen, don't make the same mistake as Peter made. We need to rely on God. Our strength, our sufficiency comes from God. And the second one is prayer. I'm so happy that here we are early for some of you. We are so happy that we spend this time praying. This is our strength. We need to watch. We need to pray. We need to spend more time on our knees. And as you go along throughout the day, let us be in an attitude of prayer all the time. Let this connection to be always. We need to stay online all the time. We need not to have even one minute offline. We need to be online all the time because the very time, just the little time of offline, the connection between us and God, the devil will take advantage of that. And he, he can make us, really can put us down. So my prayer for all of us today is that we should not be, should not fall into this trap of being self-confident. We need to trust in God. Secondly, we need not to be too busy to pray. We need to watch because time is difficult and the devil works over time right now. We need to have this spirit of prayer. May the Lord be with us and Next time, we will talk about the, some of the problems of Peter. And remember, the title is, Where is the Fire? Tomorrow we'll reach that point already. And uh, I would like us to really to meditate upon that. May the Lord be with us. And we will rely on him and we'll watch and pray every time. Amen. And amen. Uh, Pastor Ratara, please can I just ask that you close the message with a word of prayer. Shall we all close our eyes as our pastor prays? Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you love us. And today we have studied a little portion, section of the life of this man, Peter. You may think that we are better than Peter, but we are not. So Lord, help us today that we will never be overconfident or arrogant, but we'll be humble and rely on you because our strength comes from you. Help us, Lord, to, to be watchful, to watch and pray because the devil is after us. And the very moment that we are not with you, then he has all authority of us. But as long as we are with you, he has no authority. So here we are. We commit our lives to you. We want to be in your hands and help us to watch, help us to rely on you. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen.